This is the new 2018 6th generation iPad that now comes with pencil support. How does it stack up against the iPad Pro? Let's check it out. The new iPad is the old form factor, a 9.7 inch screen. It's just a little bit smaller than the iPad Pro's 10.5 inch, but not by much. The screen looks great, it's crisp. Its resolution is 2048 pixels by 1536 pixels. The colors are as vibrant and as nice as you would expect from any iPad. It's also got a camera and speakers and a processor and blah, blah, blah. This is a review for Illustrator, so I'm gonna be talking about illustration and specifically the Apple Pencil, so let's just dive into that. Really what makes this iPad special is the price. You can now use the Apple Pencil on a device that costs half as much as an iPad Pro. Now obviously it doesn't have the specs of an iPad Pro, so that's what I wanted to check out is can the Pencil still perform well on a spec down iPad? The answer is yes. I can say with confidence after using it for a couple days that the experience is identical to using the Pencil on an iPad Pro. The pressure sensitivity still feels great and the tilt recognition on the pen still works as advertised. I did notice on the screen itself there's a little bit more space between the glass and the screen underneath it than there are on on the pros, but not too much. On many tablets, this sort of thing causes something called parallax. That is the difference between where your pen tip hits the screen and where your cursor actually shows up, but that wasn't a problem here. And compared to many of the pen displays I've used, that amount of space is very minimal. Oftentimes what parallax gets in the way of is tracing something, tracing one of your sketches, or getting circles or lines to close. That wasn't a problem here. It's very easy to do that. You still have a ton of accuracy. Now the Apple Pencil tip is hard plastic and the iPad screen is smooth glass. I prefer the feel of drawing on something a little bit more textured than this. I like to use inexpensive matte screen protectors to kind of add a little bit of uh, edge to it. Gives me a little bit more control. I don't like to draw fast. I like to slow things down a little bit and be more accurate. Just a personal preference of mine. A little bit more drawing resistance. I used several apps and they all ran extraordinarily well. The one I was really curious about here was Affinity Photo. This is a pro level desktop app that has been moved over to the iPad and has been advertised as a pro level app for the iPad Pro. I dug through all my old Photoshop illustrations and I was looking for something that was big, high res, something that I was using for print. I grabbed my old Christmas card from last year. This thing has a ton of layers, it has a ton of stuff going on, and I was drawing on it and it ran just fine. At this point, I'm getting a little bit disappointed. I would have hoped by this point, I would have brought this thing to its knees. So I set up another test. I wanna figure out when am I actually gonna find some good old fashioned lag on these brushes. So here I am at Affinity Photo, I found it. I'm using a canvas that is eight and a half by 11 and has a 600 DPI. That's about twice the resolution I'd normally draw. And when I use a textured brush and I blow it up big enough, this one's like 200 some pixels wide, I get some pretty good lag on it. Using the same resolution setup on the 2017 iPad Pro, you can see it handles it much better. Now you compare it with my 12.9 inch older original iPad Pro and you see it has a similar amount of lag. In fact, the performance on this iPad is better than my iPad Pro from two years ago. The processor in it is comparable. My iPad Pro has way more RAM but this thing runs way, way better. Uh, got a rant about that. I'll, I'll save that for the end of the video though. Even using AstroPad to connect to my Mac's desktop worked really, really well, shockingly well. This is really smooth and, and it's kind of awesome. So the real question here is why would you buy this compared to say a new iPad Pro? The Pro has pretty much more of everything. Better speakers, better processor, you get a larger screen, you get a lot more RAM. Also the screen has that true tone touch technology. The biggest benefit of the Pro is definitely the refresh rate. I notice the faster refresh rate. Mostly I notice it when I'm reading or when I'm scrolling through a lot of text on a website. In drawing, I don't notice it quite as much. I can definitely see it, that's for sure. When you're drawing really fast, the line appears closer to your pencil. If you're worried about getting this iPad and not having that higher refresh rate, I wouldn't worry that much about it. When I'm drawing, I'm not paying attention to how far away the line is from my pencil. I'm not saying, hey, this is a millimeter away from my pencil tip when I draw really, really fast. I'm paying attention to what I'm drawing, so I don't really notice the refresh rate so much when I'm actually drawing. If I look for it, it's definitely there, but I'm usually not looking for it. If you are using your iPad for hours at a time and all day, if it's your primary device, you probably want the features that come with the iPad Pro. For casual drawing and sketching and just taking with you, you're gonna be fine without it. The new iPad only has two gigs of RAM and I really did think that was gonna be a problem, but when I was using it, it really wasn't. From a performance standpoint, I can't tell the difference between between this and my iPad Pro. Here's what I think makes this new iPad really interesting, and that is when you look at the price range, anything under $500, 
This blows all of those out of the water completely. I'm gonna be totally yelled at here and be called like an Apple fanboy in the comments. I know it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I think maybe the closest thing to something like this would be the Galaxy Tab S3, which I reviewed last year. That's a little under $500 now. Samsung also has a Chromebook around that price that I've heard a lot of good things about. And I would say that the Galaxy Tab S3 is a really good piece of hardware. The problem is, is Android's Achilles heel are the apps. I think the apps on the iPad Pro just completely obliterate anything on Android. Don't get me wrong, they're decent decent drawing apps out there, but I mean, look at this, Procreate, uh, Affinity Photo, you got Affinity Designer coming out soon, you have Astropad, you have Clip Studio on the iPad, there is nothing on Android that even comes close to those apps. Sorry, Android. Now when I compare this with some of the 16-inch pen displays I've been reviewing recently, they, those pen displays, they aren't bad, but the screen on the iPad just blows those out of the water. Most of those are still standard HD, 1920 by 1080, but when you spread all of those pixels out across 16 inches, you could definitely see the pixels. It's just not nearly as bright and as crisp. The pixels per inch are much, much lower. And plus on those devices, you have noticeable parallax, something that takes getting used to when you first start using them. You don't have that on the iPad. Devices like this still have a place. I've been drawing a lot in Flash lately, and as much as I like AstroPad, using it on a 9.7 inch screen to draw in Adobe's apps is a really cramped experience. All of that UI shoved into a small screen, eh, it's not so much fun. I will say it definitely works better on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but on these 16-inch monitors, it, it, it works much better. But when you're talking about quality, the quality of the drawing experience with the pen, the, the quality of the screen itself, if you want to get close to this on the desktop, you're looking at a $1,000 13-inch Cintiq Pro. So that's why I say when this blows everything else out of the water in its price range, it really does. You have to spend twice as much to get this kind of quality. So cons, what are the cons? I've said a lot of nice things. Well, hold on, I'm going to say some negative things. The biggest con about this device device is that it's an Apple device. A lot of people really don't like the Apple ecosystem. I'm fully entrenched in it. I've got a Mac, I've got an iPhone, I've got an iPad, so everything works together pretty well. If you don't, it can be a little bit frustrating. Plus, the purpose of the Apple ecosystem is kind of to draw you in and make it harder to leave, and that rubs a lot of people the wrong way. If you don't have iCloud, you're gonna spend a lot of time fiddling with your settings, getting bugged by Apple to upgrade, and you can't use things like AirDrop or even AstroPad. And the other thing about Apple, and this is probably the thing that gives me the most pause, is I am worried about Apple slowing down older devices. This was big in the news earlier this year. Apple was caught slowing down iPhones with older batteries. Their reasoning was, well, I don't want to go into the whole thing. You've probably heard about it. If you haven't, I'll link some stuff down below. But the point is, is Apple slows down older devices to save on battery life and, and hopefully help the device not die. Here's my personal experience. I have an iPad Pro. It is a little over two years old. It was the top of the line 12.9 inch iPad Pro when it came out. I know the slowdown issue has only been tied to iPhones, but that iPad Pro is not nearly as fast as it used to be. Every so often the keyboard slows down and you see the like letters kind of have to catch up with what I'm typing. Basic stuff that the operating system should do well. Drawing lines occasionally lag. It's not too bad yet, but it seems to be getting worse over time. The one thing that doesn't work well at all anymore is AstroPad. Um, AstroPad, I guess, I don't know why. It is really slowed down. I doubt the folks at AstroPad are slowing down their own program. They have done everything that they can over the last couple years to make their app faster and faster. I don't think they're the ones slowing this down on purpose. It makes more sense that the iPad itself is slowing down. I can make a whole video on this. I don't want to go into that much detail in this video. I just want to put that down as a con, is that most of the other devices that you get, if you get a screen-based tablet, a, a Wacom tablet, like that Cintiq Pro 13 that I was talking about, yeah, it's $1,000, but people use their Cintiqs for years and years and years and years. You know, five years ago, that's going to work just as as good then as it does now. This iPad that you buy today, two years from now, is probably going to be slower because this is not the top of the line iPad like my iPad Pro was. I don't know, a year or two years down the road, is this thing going to be worth drawing on? I, I don't know. Some people say it's a conspiracy. Apple's doing this on purpose. Some people say that it's just to save on battery. I don't really care. The, the point is, is 
you're going to be spending 400 some odd dollars on on this iPad and an Apple Pencil. And you just have to be aware of the fact that it's got a shelf life. And, and some of the other devices out there that you can get have a much longer shelf life. So if that's important to you, you definitely have to take it into consideration. Not being able to use one of my favorite apps, AstroPad, on my iPad Pro, which still feels new to me, is only two years old, is really frustrating to me and has done more to sour me to Apple than anything else they have ever done. And I'm an Apple fanboy. This is really about the new iPad, which overall, I gotta say, Thoroughly impressed with using it. Loving every aspect of it. I think a lot of people who can't afford the iPad Pro are gonna be really, really happy with this device. So if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. It's all I've got in this video. I guess I'm gonna see you guys in a couple of days.